Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Vishal Seth, who is in Sydney. And it's your summer, right? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I had the privilege of being in Sydney one time at late November, early December, when my son was little and we got to watch all the we went down to uh, you know the harbor and watched all the Santas coming in on the jet skis. <laughs> yeah, November, December are the best time to um, be in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, because I used to travel there a lot, and then I just forget. And you know, I mean, I'd go in in uh, I'd turn up there in the summer and forget to bring a jacket, mm -hmm. thinking, "Oh shoot, it's not <laughs> summer, it's winter." But <laughs> 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 all right. Well, uh, Vishal is uh, the entrepreneurial force behind Battery Mate, a leading Australian e-commerce group. And you've begun in, in a garage with just 10 products, and now you're a dominant player with over 5,000 product catalog, earning your status as one of the most successful battery brands in Australia and New Zealand within a mere uh, three to four years. Uh, it's a testament to resilience and adaptability, starting with minimal capital and experiences. You and your team embraced a self-taught approach to entrepreneurship. And you're going to share some of your insights today with our, with our audience. But uh, take, take us back for a moment to those early days when you just started. You said you didn't have capital. You didn't really have experience. Uh, what, what made you think that you, what was the driving force? What made you think that you could make it successful? Yeah. Um, so thanks for thanks for having me, John. So we started our business uh, back in um, 2018, just with around 10 products, as you mentioned. Um, so I was working full time in in one of the bank here, and this was just a part time business. So we thought, okay, let us just get some product from China. Uh, let us taste the market. It started doing well. Uh, we were operating from a single garage at that point of time. So in late 2018, I resigned from my full-time job and um, uh, we kind of reinvested our profit in our business, um, imported some more products. They started doing well as well. Then in 2019, we moved to a um, small warehouse. And um, uh, at that point of time, we had around 100 products in our uh, portfolio. So it was it was slow but steady journey. In 2020, um, we launched uh, batterymite.com.au that specializes in uh, rechargeable batteries and uh, chargers um, category. And um, uh, from there, uh, we kept on adding new products in our portfolio. And in 2023 today, we have got over 5,000 uh, different items. And we have two warehouses in Western Sydney area. And we serve customers from Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, um, Canada, Europe, and also um, US. Oh, wow. So how did you, how did you, especially in those early days, because, I mean, you said, you know, it, it took a while. It was slow at the beginning. You have to build up. That's what uh, I know when I speak to a lot of uh, people who set up businesses. Those are the toughest times because everything takes longer than you would like it to. So how did you maintain, you know, your motivation and uh, and stay focused on your on your journey when maybe things were, were slow at the beginning? Yeah, that's right. So look, I mean, what happens, what I have experienced is when you make your first $10,000, you are like, oh, wow, I can, you know, I can make a business out of it. And then when you make $100,000, uh, you are like, oh, wow, I'm on the right track. But then from 100000 to a million dollars is extremely difficult journey and takes really, really long time. And then the thing is, when you are new in the business, right, nobody wants to finance you. If you go to banks, they will ask mm -hmm. a lot of um uh, security and documents and this and that and you will not have it because you are pretty much brand new in the business just maybe a year or two years old um, but that is the most challenging part then from 1 million to 10 million is another um, kind of big uh, big jump but when you reach 10 million dollar you kind of have the formula you can repeat what you have done in the past and then you can pretty much um, grow from from um, uh, that point um, but from from zero to 10, 10 to 100, 100 to one is extremely hard journey. And th that is pretty much, um, that that is the time when you will uh, face a lot of teething issues, a lot of compliance issues, a lot of tax issues. Um, and But but once you reach that 10 million milestone, you pretty much will have a formula that you can repeat and, and start 
start growing your business or hiring people is really really challenging when your business is small because nobody want to work in a sure. you know small small organization nobody want to work in a single garage um and and when you try to find partners for um to deliver your product or to find when you when you're trying to find suppliers from overseas nobody want to supply to a company that has like one employee and is is working out of a garage so these are the challenges that um uh, new businesses or pretty much new e-commerce businesses faced um, all across all across the globe. So these 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 challenges were very hard. It took took us a few years to kind of overcome these challenges. And in in 2023 today, um, I can say we are kind of an established um, level, and um, I'm pretty confident we can we can grow battery might um, from here onwards. Yeah, and and it's interesting what you mentioned there, e- even about you know access to capital because obviously that's a tough road when you when you don't have access to capital and you got to do it but then again getting money sometimes can come with its own set of issues too so um at least if you get through this phase of being kind of self-financed at least you have your destiny in your own hands and i and i guess ultimately that's a greater level of satisfaction yeah yeah i totally agree and well, a side effect or a byproduct of not having access to um, a large amount of capital is you are extremely responsible uh, when when it comes to spending money or when it comes to importing inventory because you know that this is your own hard-earned money and um, this is your own profit and you are just reinvesting your profit. So you always make sure that your business is always profitable. We see a lot of startups nowadays that are in red or in negative for, for five or ten years of, of the inception where uh, in cases like us, um, which started from scratch, from a very uh, humble uh, background, we focused on being profitable from pretty much first month because we just didn't have any option. We mm-hmm. always had to be profitable. So I would say that that actually worked out in our favor. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think a lot of uh, people are discovering now that, uh, you know, before the economy t- took a bit of a turn and, and COVID all that, it was people were dishing out money and just saying, yeah, you know, just grow your top line yeah. revenue. Don't matter about the bottom line. Forget about that. Just grow, grow, grow. And now they've even switched to, oh, you need to have a path to profitability, which most of these most of these companies don't. So, um, you know, doing it the way you've done it, the same way we've done it with our business, it's uh, it, it does put it in your own hands. And uh, and I think it's it's a it's a more sustainable business, clearly. So in the in the early part of, of your journey, what were some of the things that what were some of the lessons that you learned and maybe some maybe ones that even surprised you uh well one of the most important lessons that i learned while um starting a company and and growing it um to the level that it is today uh was it is extremely important to have um smart and productive people in your team um in our early days we used to hire those guys that we could afford because we were mm-hmm. really, really small and we had very small budget for uh, for staff. Um, but then in in first year or so, I realized um, if we have smart people working with us, um, it will be it will be um, really fast and and easier to grow our business rather than having anyone who just want to work and. Mm-hmm at minimum minimum pay so that is one of the most important lessons that i learned and then second important lesson was uh, how important relationships are in the business whether it's your suppliers whether it's your um, delivery partners whether it's your online marketing partners but relationships are extremely important um especially when it comes to um starting a company and and um, taking it to next level Mm-hmm. And then, what were some of the what were some of the strategies or ways that you were able to scale the business once you got over the initial you know, the initial startup period, the very early startup period? What were some of the strategies you used for scaling? Yeah, so when we have when anybody who has a big for, portfolio like like us, um, what we do is we reinvest about sixty five to seventy percent of our profit in repeating our success. So let's say if we try product X, Y, Z, it did really well. We go deep in that category. Uh, we go as deep as possible, but with remaining 30% profit, we keep on trying new categories. We keep on trying new products and anything that works, we stick with those products. We keep repeating that success strategies. And then we keep on investing 
30% of our revenue consistently in trying new products, in trying new strategies, in trying uh, new marketing initiatives. So what, what it has done is, is um, it has allowed us to introduce new categories every six months. If I just give you a recent example, in 2022, uh, we launched um, uh, wireless remote control. So let's say remote for your TV, for your AC, for your car. We lose remotes all the time. If you have kids, if you have pets, you know, uh, what it feels like to lose lose a remote control for your TV. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't mm-hmm. you can't even switch on your TV. Uh, so that's where we come into picture. You you know, buy a new remote for 15 bucks and you get it delivered um, at your home in, in two days, three days, and then um, you can pretty much use your appliance again. So that so this consistent reinvesting in new categories allowed us to discover this um, uh, this sector, which was pretty much um, unexplored before. Uh, not many companies were focusing in this category. Mm-hmm. So I would say consistently uh, investing in, in new initiative is the secret sauce of, uh, of Battery Might. Yeah. And I guess also a part of that is being able to realize pretty quickly that maybe this isn't a category that's going to work for you and getting out before you invest too much in it. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, I mean, we try new products. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, we, we try for 90 days, 180 days. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We just keep on going after it. Um, and then, interestingly, uh, one of the other lessons that we learned is not all the products are meant for all the um, all the platforms. So there are mm. some products that do incredibly well on marketplaces like Amazon, like Walmart and, um, and others, but they do very bad in our online stores. Nobody wants to go to online store and, let's say, buy a $5 battery. But people want to buy these cheap products from from Amazon or, or from eBay. So that was another lesson that we learned that not all the products are meant for all the platforms. So we don't we don't pretty much put that much marketing effort in in uh, promoting those products that are just doing well in marketplaces and not not showing results in our mm-hmm. online store. And on the other side, uh, when it comes to uh, expensive products, this is something that costs 300, 400, 500 dollars, uh, people are preferring to buy them from branded website rather than going to Amazon or eBay just because they can speak to real person when they, you know, come to our own website, betterymind.com.au. They can call us, they can email us. They know that they are buying from real people. Where uh, when you buy something on marketplaces like eBay and Amazon, you, it's just pretty much a faceless store um, that is there um, living living just online, but you don't know whom you're buying it from. So that mm-hmm. is the difference that we have seen. Yeah, and and what's really fascinating about that is uh, that's a case of really understanding your buyers and their behavior and how they like to buy and adapting your business to the way they want to buy. And I think that's a really, really important thing because sometimes, as you said, people try to sell the same way to everybody and it doesn't work. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, And let's say if you if you buy from different marketplaces, a lot of times what happens is items come from overseas. They are not even located in your country. So if something goes wrong uh, or if there is a warranty issue, you don't know where to go. You know, if they ask you, okay, send it back to X, Y, or Z country. And it's going to be really inconvenient for you. But when you when you buy from a branded store, branded outlet, you know these people are located here. They're out in public. Their number is, their phone number is out in public. And all of the information is just there. So that builds uh, more of a, a trust factor as well. Mm-hmm. So, what are some of the what are some of the key traits you look for now in anybody you bring into the into the business or people that you brought into the business? Because I know it's a thing that oftentimes like, people will have worked at large organizations and then they'll say, "Oh, maybe I want to take a chance and go out there, join this small entrepreneurial. Uh, maybe this will be a great opportunity for me." But the transition from big company to s- scrappy entrepreneurial company can be very, very challenging yeah. for people. Yeah, that's right, and that is, uh, yeah, that's right. Um, so what what I look for is um, uh, just one thing, which is attitude. Um, skills can be taught. I mean, I, I myself do not come from e-commerce background. I learned every single thing on the job, whether it's Facebook marketing, Google marketing, um, uh, having a website, uh, running a Shopify store, um, dealing with finance companies. I learned everything on the job. So I strongly believe that skills can be taught, but attitude cannot be taught. If you come with an attitude that, oh, well, this is my job description, this is, this, I'm only going to do these five things. And if somebody asks me to do six of things, I'm just going to say no. So that is pretty much a big no-no um, for our company. And um, we have 
hired a lot of smart, talented people who joined as um, customer service guys and they moved up to um, the head of uh, logistics role. Um, we, if you if you work for a bigger company, let's say there will be pay review or performance review once a year. Mm -hmm. We do pay review every three months. If we are doing well, um, you will you know that people are noticing, uh, your managers are noticing, and then every third month, every fourth month, every fifth month, if you are performing really well, if you are meeting all of your KPIs, uh, you'll be rewarded in form of bonus, in form of commission, in form of, we also give um, additional uh, day off to um, all of our staff members. So let's say if, um, uh, if, you, if it's your birthday, you don't have to work on your birthday, you get a paid day off on your birthday. We also give one additional cultural day off to people. So, uh, if you're celebrating Diwali, if you're celebrating mm -hmm. Eid, um, you get a paid day off. In exchange to that, uh, we need right attitude. Uh, we need people who can get things done and not always point out problems. I mean, every problem has an opportunity hidden in it. So we, the attitude is everything when it comes um, to hiring uh, people, especially in our company. Yeah, I is, is, I always say to or ever said to people that your job description. Yeah, these are all the things that are are lined out here. But the most important sentence on your job description is, and anything else your manager <laughs> requires. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, so tell me, uh, as as you as you grew and uh, as you're in this new phase, tell me some of the new challenges that you're facing because obviously at every stage of your journey the challenges change yeah correct so um we we grew uh, in australia um quite quite rapidly i mean it took us three years but it was still faster than than other companies so we grew profitably um and then when we were um going to other countries um in new zealand in in europe one of the biggest challenges that we faced was compliance. Um, mm. Europe, we treat Europe as, as one European Union, but every country has different regulation. If you are selling, let's say, charges in France, they need their different certification. If you are selling something in Germany, uh, government compliance regulation is completely different. So understanding um, uh, uh, laws of, of the land and, and different compliance checks was very challenging when we were um, branching out in uh, American um, market. Um, we are live on Best Buy and Walmart. Um, so they had their own set of uh, different requirements um, as well. And then when you go to bigger market, um, like let's say US, which, which is highly competitive market, you, you can't expect the kind of profit margin that we have in our, in our home market, but in return, you get access to a really huge market. So, um, yeah, every country, every um, expansion phase has, has its own challenges. Challenges. Um, New Zealand was a very interesting market for us. Um, uh, New Zealand is pretty much a first world country, but when we entered that market, there were not that many e-commerce um, players in that market. So we were able to capture a, a good, good, a good pie of, of a huge e-commerce market that was there and people wanted to buy. Uh, stuff online it just they didn't have that many options um at that point of time when we entered so i would say every country every expansion phase come come with its own challenges mm -hmm. and then just finally what, what what advice would you have for people who are considering you know, starting their own business going out being an entrepreneur because it's becoming more and more where people feel like they can do it because of the technologies out there. Uh, we have a lot of people who don't want to live in, you know, they want to live wherever they want to live. They want to start their own business, et cetera. What advice would you have to somebody who's thinking about going out on their own? Yes. If somebody's starting business in 2023, 2024, um, I would say barriers of entry are just negligible. They are just minimum. I mean, you can, you can build a really good looking, it's a website. Um, you can have a very well packaged product. You can give it a million dollar look without spending a million dollar. It's really easy nowadays. Um, so I would say um, if you are starting something um, in 2023, 2024, I mean, just just go for it. Um, barriers of entries are almost negligible. Access to capital in many markets is easier than what it used to be just a decade ago. Um, so, and having your own business gives you a lot of satisfaction as well. So I would say just go for it. Yeah. Well, listen, this has been fantastic, uh, Vishal. All of Vishal's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell a little more about you and your business. 
Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I'm founder and CEO of batterymind.com.au. We specialize in rechargeable batteries, chargers, gaming gears, and wireless remote controls. And as I also mentioned before, I mean, we don't look at BatteryMind just as uh, any other e-commerce business. We focus on um, uh, sustainability aspect as well. And we help people getting more out of their existing devices. So let's say if you bought your vacuum cleaner or your laptop five years back, if it's not lasting um, long enough today, you don't need to buy a new laptop. You don't need to buy a new vacuum cleaner. Just replace your battery, come to us. We sell battery at, at reasonable price and then it will just start um, uh, working as a, as a brand new product. Oh, fantastic. fantastic. All right. So uh, as oh, I said, all of Michelle's information be be down below there. So uh, check out Battery Mite. <laughs> That's my yeah. terrible Australian accent. But there you go. <laughs> uh, thanks again, Michelle. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon.